This video is about tuning your controller in a discrete domain using the Ziegler and Nichols rules. As you all know, Ziegler and Nichols is often used for so-called simple processes. If you want to know more about Ziegler and Nichols, watch the video in the Control Systems playlist. In many motion control applications, we apply the rules of loop shaping and we discretize the controller using an approximation method like Dustin. Note that for Ziegler and Nichols, we um, have to design a controller using the parallel structure. So we have to implement it in a parallel way. So then the controller looks like this. HR, which is the transfer function of our PID controller, is KR, which is the proportional gain, times 1 plus 1 over tau i times s, which is the integral part of the controller, plus tau d times s, which is the differential part of a controller. So this is the transfer function for our controller. Remember that Ziegler Nichols had two ways of tuning the controller. We had the step response method and there is the oscillation method. Well, uh, for the step response method, we um, apply a step to the input of the system. X over here and then the system response probably looks like this like a signal Y and we can say well this is a kind of first order behavior plus we have a delay over here so we can model our system by um, having a first order transfer function and we add to that first order transfer function the transfer function of a delay the delay time tau D can be calculated using the intersection point of the tangent of i of y over here, this point minus the starting point of our input step, and we can calculate the tau out of this signal by taking that same tangent over here and take the difference between the intersection point with the end value of y and the starting point over here. And then we have tau and the delay time td. When we this, we use a discrete controller, we have to sample our, our system and that sampling yields an actual extra delay time of 0.5 times the sample time, so 0.5 um, times T or TS. So we have to use that extra delay in the uh, Ziegler and Nichols tuning rules using that step response method. And remember, when we had a continuous controller, then we could use um, these rules for getting the KR, the tau i, and the tau d, so our system, our controller parameters. Well, when we had only a peak controller, we could say, well, KR is equal to 1 over the process gain times tau divided by td. When we have a PI controller, we have the same setting for KR multiplied with 0.9 and tau i can be set to 3.3 times delay time. And when we had a PID controller, well, then KR was the same value as in the P controller, but multiplied with 1.2 due to the derivative action over here. And we can set tau i to 2 times delay time, and we can set tau d to 0.5 times the delay time. Now we have a discrete controller, so we have to replace that TD in all these functions over here by TD plus half the sample time. And then we get this as our table for setting the KR, tau i and tau d for a P, PI and PID controller. So in every case, TD has been replaced by TD plus that extra delay time due to sampling, which is 0.5 times sampling time T. We get that back in every expression over here. So now we have tuned our controller. And um, when this is not an appropriate method, then we can still use the oscillation method, which we also discussed in that video about Ziegler and Nichols. And all the parameters over here are the same as in the continuous time controller. So when we have controlled, uh, when we have um, uh, defined the parameters for a controller, then we have defined parameters over here, kr, tau i, and tau d. When we want to use all uh, values for a PID type controller, but then we have to implement that controller. Remember, there are two methods. When we want to use an approximation method, we can use either the backwards difference approximation, and in that case, we replace s by z minus 1 divided by z times t, in which t is the sampling time. 
and when we want to use the bilinear transformation method or the Tustin method, then we have to replace s by 2 over t times z minus 1 divided by z plus 1. So in this case, we have learned how we can tune also a discrete controller by using the Ziegler and Nichols rules, and we have seen how we can transform that continuous time controller to a discrete controller by using one of these approximation methods. Thank you for watching. See you next time.